God, oh God. Oh God, we know that you are able. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we know that you are able. We thank you, oh God, because we know that your name, oh God, is a strong tower. The righteous run therein, oh God, and they are safe, oh God. So we call on your name on this morning. We call on your name on this morning. We call on your name on this morning. Jesus, 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 the rock of our salvation, Jesus, oh God, Jesus, our healer, Jesus, we need you, oh God, come on, call on his name, Jesus, come on, call on his name, Jesus. Jesus, oh God, we know that you're able. Oh God, we know that you're able. Oh God, we take you at your word. Oh God, we believe, oh God, that when we pray, that when we pray, that he heareth us. And because we believe that when we pray, he heareth us, we let forth a shout of victory. We let for a shout of victory. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, shout like it's already done. We already know he's able. Come on, shout like it's already done. Come on, praise like it's already done. Yep, that's good enough for the president, or that's good enough for our pastor. But come on, shout out to God. Woo! God deserves an exclusive praise. It's already done. As we go forth in this service, I want you to take that word with you. It's already done. It's already done. So as we go forth in praise and worship, it's already done. It's already done. It's it's already done. It's already done. In the name of Jesus. We don't have to look for it. All we got to do is believe for it. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Come on, he's moving in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, I feel the spirit all over me. All over me, it's in my hands, in my soul, down in my feet. Ooh, I feel the spirit all over me. We sing. I feel your spirit all over me. Oh, I feel your spirit all over me. It's in my hands, in my soul, down in my feet. Ooh, I feel your spirit. All over me, listen. I feel your presence all over me. Oh, I feel your presence all over me. It's in my head, in my soul, down in my feet. Ooh, I feel your presence all over me. You, I feel your presence all over me. I feel the presence. I feel your presence. All over me, it's in my hands, in my soul, down in my feet. Ooh, I feel your presence all over me.
anybody feel the power of the Holy Ghost? You ought to say, move on me, Lord. It's been a while since I've been able to pick my feet up and put them down. Move on me, Jesus. It's been a while since I've been able to open up my mouth and praise you. Move on. We need to move. Say move, move. Jesus, move, move. Come on right now, let's agree. Move, move. I feel I'm doing something in here right now. Move, move. Can I ask you a question? Do you need a move, move? Well, guess what? If you move, he'll move. Move, move. Put those hands. Come on, clap those hands. And while you're at it, why don't you open up your mouth and give him some praise? Why don't you open up your mouth and give him some glory? I don't know what you come to do. But I come to clap my hands. And I come to stump my feet. And I come to give God praise. I wish I had somebody else in here that came to praise the Lord with me. Yeah, say move, 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 move. Keep moving, 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 moving. He's moving, moving. don't move you I don't know what else will there's not a chord that can be played there's not a song that can be sung we we need God to be the focus in this building right now why don't we stop what we're doing and put our minds on the Lord right now come on get your mind on the Lord Why don't all over the building, if you can hear my voice, why don't we come into the sanctuary and get our minds on the Lord? Why don't business stop for a moment and we just call on the name of the Lord? What would happen if his people which were called by them, his name would humble themselves and pray? If we would gather and praise the Lord on one accord. Come on, we come to get a hold of God. We come to get more of him. Come on, if that's you, call on his name. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, call on his great name, his wonderful, powerful name. We feel him moving, he's moving. Why don't you let him have his way? Go to that deeper place with him. That's 
said, Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Said he's king of kings, and he's Lord. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got a right to 
to leap for joy. Everybody, everybody, leap, leap, leap for joy. 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 Oh, I just can't stop. I can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising His name, Jesus. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 1157, we're on our way to heaven. 1158, don't be late. 1159, be on time. 12 o'clock, all night, all night, all night. All night, all night, all night. All night.
Something about that Holy Ghost. 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 If you got the Holy Ghost, you should be praising. You should be excited when you talk about the Holy Ghost. There's something about it. I can't explain it, but I know I got it. He's the Lion of Judah of praise. And if he's down on the inside of you, there should be no problem with giving God praise. Come on, that's all right. Praise him, Sister Kay. Praise him. Hallelujah. I got it. 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 Like the Bible says. I got it. somebody turn and tell somebody I said tell them I come to praise the Lord today hallelujah I just want to give you an apostolic report is that all right since July the 2nd as a merged congregation we have seen 36 people baptized in Jesus name we've seen lives impacted by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ come on somebody lift your hands and just give God a praise Hey, hey, listen, that's not all. On Friday night during BT University, we had 34 people in the class. There was a man that drove all the way from Bloomington, Indiana. Amen. His bishop was teaching on the oneness of God. And the power of the Holy Ghost was in the room. And the man looked and he said, he's not teaching Trinity. He's teaching oneness as God was opening up his understanding. And First Lady Fields began to teach him about the baptism in Jesus' name after class. He came into the sanctuary and he said, I'm ready to go down in Jesus' name. Can I He came out of the baptismal room and he was singing, I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. He said, if anybody asks me what's the matter with me, he said, tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire. Come on, can we stand our feet? Let's just lift our hands and let's just worship God right now. Come on. 
Come on, I'm telling you, the Lord, he's doing something right now. Come on, if you can't see it, I'm praying that God open up your eyes, that the Lord is moving. He's doing a marvelous work in our eyes. Whole households are being saved. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be pastors that are going to come ready to be baptized in Jesus' name. Sister Terica, I believe that God's going to do it. She came in contact with a pastor, and she began to witness to him about this apostolic truth. I'm telling you that God is going to convert whole churches. They're going to be baptized in Jesus' name. If you're willing to believe God with me, lift your voice and shout hallelujah. Come on, close your eyes and just worship the Lord right now. Come on, and as you worship the Lord, I want you to begin to lift that family member up. Come on and tell the Lord, Lord, if you can do it for 36 souls, surely you got one more room, one more space. You got room at the altar for my son, for my daughter, for my mother, for my father, for my auntie, for my uncle, for my community. There's still room at the cross. Come on, that's it. Come on. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Just talk to him. Come on, the Spirit of the Lord is here. There is liberty. Come on. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Come on, I want you to continue to worship him. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Come on and sing it with us. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. see this brother right here. <laughs> He's not going to testify, so I'm going to testify for him. We don't want him to get too excited. But he went to the hospital having an irregular heartbeat. His heart was racing so fast. The doctors told him he shouldn't even be alive right now. And he was just sitting up in the hospital bed like nothing was going on. The doctors couldn't understand what was happening. Amen. But listen, he shouldn't even be here right now. So we're looking at a miracle. You can't tell me that God still isn't doing miracles uh, because he's still in the miracle working business. Uh, we got miracles all around us. Uh, we got people that shouldn't even be here right now. Uh, but God is still working miracles. Come on, lift your hands and just worship him. I believe the Lord, he's not done. He's going to do something great today. Oh. Lord, I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And I worship and adore you. Just one. your voice and sing I love you Jesus I love you Jesus I worship and adore you just want to tell you Lord I love you more than anything come on clap your 
clap your hands and give him some praise. Come on, clap your hands and give him some praise. Come on, and why don't you put some words to that hand clap and tell him that you love him. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. For those of you, this may be your first time here. Welcome to Bethesda Temple Apostolic Church. Amen. As we believe is this is the place, amen, that you can meet God and God will meet every last one of your needs. Amen, somebody. As our officials come forth, amen, as our officials come forth, we're going to take up our offering. We thank the Lord for what he is doing in our midst. Amen. I thank the Lord, amen, for what he is doing in the development process of our ministries here at Bethesda BT University. Amen. As God is, amen, he is doing something marvelous. Amen. And Bishop Fields was just all in the Holy Ghost on Friday night. Amen. He was really in his element, teaching under the anointing and the, and the power of God. Man, as Brother Shepherd stated, amen, not too long ago, he said that it's an honor and a privilege, and there's not many places that you can go to where there is an apostolic father and pillar, amen, in the midst of the people of God, as he is one of the few that is still here with us, amen, and so we thank God for that, amen. <laughs> amen, as we count it an honor and a privilege, amen, to have him here with us still laboring in the field, amen, and doing what he does best under the power of the Holy Ghost and teaching and ministering the gospel, amen, and, the t and sound doctrine. Everybody say sound doctrine. Yeah. Amen. You know, we need sound doctrine. Amen. We need sound doctrine. It is the only, it's the only way to teach doctrine. Come on. It's got to be sound. Come on. Amen. It's got to be according to the rightly divided word of God. Amen. There's a whole lot of doctrine that's going around, but amen. Most of it is not sound. But I thank the Lord for having, amen, a bishop that teaches sound doctrine, amen. And it is our expectation, amen, that as he and Evangelist Jones, myself, amen, and anybody else that God sees fit to come in on the process, amen, that, that ministers would develop and grow, amen. The ministry of Bethesda will begin to continue to flourish, amen, to where there be ministers that are just raised up teaching sound apostolic truth. Amen. Going out into the streets and spreading this gospel. Amen. And so we look forward, amen, to seeing what God is going to do in the future. Amen. As this is second Sunday, and so this Sunday is, it is Mission Sunday. Amen. It is Mission Sunday. Amen. For those of you, amen, that desire to serve, amen, not only do you have the opportunity to serve through your giving, amen, but this Wednesday we also have, amen, our, um, our, 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 our homeless ministry where we go downtown and we feed the homeless, amen. As a matter of fact, amen, the, the one of the roofers that we have been meeting with, him and his family will be down there with us on, on Wednesday, amen, somebody. And so, you know, he asked me if, if him and his family could join us and he wanted to, amen, talk about some things, amen, with just me and him one-on-one, -on -one. and I said, absolutely, Amen. As I believe that God's putting something on his heart. And so I need you to pray with me that God will continue to do a work in this man and his family's life in Jesus name. Amen. But there is an opportunity to serve. Amen. In the kitchen. Amen. You can come and help as they make prepared good. Amen. Meals. Sister Deborah Duncan does a phenomenal job. Amen. As well as others. Sister Britton and all the other people. Amen. That, that work in the kitchen. That work in the kitchen on that day. Amen. Working hard to, amen, prepare those meals that we go out and feed the, amen, those that are less fortunate, amen, less fortunate than us, amen. And so there's opportunities to serve in the kitchen. And there's also opportunities to serve out there in the field, amen, as we meet every second Wednesday off of Alabama and New York Street, amen. We are there, amen, starting about 445, 5 o'clock, 
and we serve the community. Amen. It's a good opportunity for you to get out. Amen. Serve the community. And I believe that as we go and serve, that God will continue to increase our burden. Amen. For those that are not just the homeless of our city, but also our city just at large. Amen. As our city is, amen, under attack and under spiritual fire. Amen. As you're seeing, there's just killings that's happening. Amen. It seems like every day on the news. Amen. But I thank the Lord that there's another report that's running parallel. That there is a still a people that is hungry and thirsty for truth. Amen. And God is doing a work not just here, but across our city. Amen. Pastor Carson at Calvary Tabernacle, his assistant pastor, came over to the church. Amen. And we gave him a tour of the facility and the grounds. Amen. And we just got to rejoice in over what God is doing for them. They rejoice in over what God is doing for us here at Bethesda Temple. Amen. And I believe that God, amen, is setting leaders up in our city. Amen. To be unified. Amen. Because it takes a unified church. Amen. To reach a divided city. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so they might not, amen, bear the same name as us, but they do teach the same gospel. Amen. They preach the same gospel and they teach the same doctrine. Amen. And so we are joining forces in the spirit. Amen. Just seeing what the Lord is going to do in the future through those connections, not just with him, but with others. Amen. Around the city. Amen. Because we have a mission. Amen. To reach our city with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So as you stand to your feet, amen. First Lady Fields, if you don't mind coming to do the decree, amen. We're going to do the Tyler's decree and then we're going to take up our offering in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Because I am a tither and a giver. Come on. The windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally, and I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have in abundance every favor and earthly blessing. All my needs are met, and I abound in every good work. Because God loves to see me prosper, I am believing him for jobs and better jobs, advancements, raises, and bonuses, sales and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessings and increase, financial freedom and breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You're in the hands of the ushers. Amen. As well as we have card swiped on this side of the sanctuary and online giving will be on the board in Jesus' name. Choir members, you can start making your way to the choir box during this time.
at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Jesus walk, risen, shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's stand to our feet and let's give God some praise. He's worthy of all of the praise, honor, and glory. Come on, I hear the sound of an army arising in this place. Can't you hear? of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name of Jesus lifted high in this place. The name, the name of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name, the name of Jesus lifted high in this place.
hear the sound of an army arising. I hear the sound of an army arising in this place. You hear? I hear the sound of an army arising. Can't you hear I the hear sound? The sound of an army Thank you for your spirit, God, your loving kindness. God, we thank you, God, for your consuming presence, Lord. Lord, we pray, God, that as the word of the Lord goes forth, as you gave it to me, Lord, I pray that you give it to your people. Lord, I pray, God, that you would open every heart. God, I pray, Lord, that you would break up fallow ground. Lord, I pray, God, that you would, oh, God, search every heart in the room. Cause us to examine ourselves. Examine our choices. Examine, God, where we stand according to the word of God. Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us, Lord. God, take us to that deeper place. Help us to make the next step. Help us to make the difficult choices, Lord God, to choose you over everything else. 
Lord, I pray, God, if there's someone under the sound of my voice, God, that has not made their call in an election sure, Lord, I pray, God, that you would help them make that next step, Lord. Go down in Jesus' name, God. Be filled with your spirit, God. Make that next step, God, to, to pursue after holiness and separation. Lord, whatever the next step is, God, for individuals in the room, Lord, I pray, God, that you would give them the boldness, God, the know-how to make that next step. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. John chapter number 8. We thank the Lord for the choir that sung a beautiful selection. We can stand our feet for the reading of the word. John chapter number 8. Children's church, you are dismissed. Children's church, you are dismissed. My apologies, I was supposed to make that announcement during the in the offering, but children's church, you are dismissed. John chapter number eight. Nursery is dismissed as well. There'll be somebody at the nursery to receive your child as well as in the back, the children's church. John chapter number eight. We'll read verses 27 through 29. Let's start at verse 23. John chapter 8, verse 23. Thank you, Jesus. When you got it, shout, I got it. One more time, if you got it, shout, I got it. Verse 23 says, and he said unto them, he said, ye are from beneath, and I am from above. And ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, Ye shall, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, well, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, when ye, have, when, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Verse 29 is our first focus verse of Scripture. And he hath sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. I'm going to read that last part again. He said, for I do always those things that please him. I want to minister to you all today on the topic of I want to please him. I want to please him. This is drawn from the profound statement spoken by Jesus Christ. He said, I always do those things that please him. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to please him. He said, I do those things that please God. Speaking this after making references to Amen. Crucifixion and ascension. Saying, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, ye will know that I am he, and I do nothing of myself. It is not of my own will, but I do it because I know it pleases God. 
Jesus' words, amen, should be the number one priority and desire of every disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we please him. Our ultimate objective should be to please God. Amen. As I'm thankful for the revelation of the oneness of God, knowing that he was God manifested in the flesh, that he came and he died for our sins. In order for us to understand what is going on in this verse here, we've got to understand the revelation of the oneness of God. Or, because if not, you would get mixed up, amen, as, as so many scholars have. If they, amen, they say that Jesus is not God because he speaks, amen, as though he is separate from the Father. And here is, amen, a scriptural reference that they make use of. But, amen, listen, the Bible, amen, gives us many accounts, amen, and even the words of Jesus Christ himself claiming to be the Father himself. Amen. That's why, amen, the scriptures declare, amen, as Paul said, amen, that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God because he was the image of the invisible God. Amen. It was Jesus that said in John 10 and 30 that I and my father are one, meaning that we are one in the same. He said in another place, when you have seen me, you have seen the father. I am in the father and the father is with me. Amen, in me. And the Apostle Paul, amen, continues to talk about, amen, the mighty God in Christ. In Colossians chapter number 1 and verse number 14, he said, amen, we have redemption through his blood. Amen, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the forgiveness of sins. And then he goes on to say, amen, by that same one that he makes reference to, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, amen, by him all things were created for him and by him. He says whether they are in heaven, whether they are in the earth, whether they are visible or invisible, whether they be thrones, he said, or dominions or principalities or powers. I think Paul covers everything, amen, with his description. And in the same chapter, amen, he says that by him, amen, all things consist. Amen. As he is re making reference, amen, in another place, 1 Timothy 3 and 16, he said that God was manifested in the flesh. If you're tired of me talking about it, I'm sorry, I just can't, amen, go a sermon, amen, or a message without talking about the mighty God in Christ. Because it is absolutely important that we grab a hold and walk in this revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Amen. This being the same Paul, amen, that had the experience, amen, with God, amen, that let him know who the mighty God was in Christ. When he was at the road of Damascus going, amen, to Damascus to persecute the church, amen, the Bible says that he was knocked off of the road, amen, by a great light. Amen. And it was at that experience that he got the revelation, amen, of who the Lord actually is. When the Bible says that he heard a voice speak out of heaven, amen, as he was knocked off of the road, amen, and the voice said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Paul responded and he said, who art thou, Lord? Amen. It was in that moment that he understood who he was speaking to. He knew he was talking to the master and the creator of everything. He said, Lord, amen, who art thou? And the Lord said, the Bible did not say the Son of God said. The Bible didn't say the Son of Man said. The Bible says the Lord said, amen, the Lord who is the creator of all things. And he speaks and he says, I am Jesus. He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. He said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. It was in that moment that Paul got the revelation, amen, that God and Christ were one in the same. As he makes reference to the mighty God in Christ over and over again throughout the epistles, amen, letting us know, amen, and not letting us forget who Jesus Christ actually is. He's more than just a man, but he's God manifested in the flesh. Amen. And listen, amen, if I were to talk to some of the scholars, some, amen, if I were to talk to some of the scholars that take the approach that Jesus is not God, amen, one thing that they are missing, amen, is they try to comprehend how God can manifest himself in a man. But one thing they are missing is that God can do anything. 
He's not limited by time or space. He's not limited, amen, by time or space. As a matter of fact, amen, Paul lets us know that God fills all space and time. He said it's in him that we live, we move, and we have our very being. Amen. The Bible testifies and it lets us know that he is from everlasting and he's to everlasting and he's everything in between. Come on, somebody shout praise the Lord. He's from everlasting to everlasting. That means that he's in our yesterday. He's in our tomorrow. That's why he knows what your tomorrow is going to look like because he's already there. He knows, amen, what the next five years is going to be for you. Amen. He knows, amen, what the end is already going to be. Amen. God is not limited by space or time. God, amen, is limitless in his power and his knowledge. Amen. When you study up on other religions, amen, and you begin to recognize, amen, the gods that they worship, they got limits. That's the reason why they have to bring a God in for this and a God in for that. But Listen, we serve a God that is limitless. Somebody shout limitless. We serve a God that is limitless, amen. That's why, amen, the book of Exodus, praise the Lord, when Moses said, who shall I say sent me? God spoke back and he said, tell him I am that I am. In other words, what he was telling him, I'll be whatever I need to be, but it's never going to take away who I am. That's how he was able to be the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. That's how he was able to be everything that we need, amen, when we need it, praise God. Listen, if God can manifest in a burning bush, why can't he manifest in the form of a man, praise God. Listen, the Bible testifies, amen, about the names of God, amen. And if you haven't studied up on it, I want you to go and do a study up on the names of God, amen. After he tells Moses, I am that I am, you start seeing God reveal himself to man through various, amen, amen, names of God. When they needed a healer, he was Jehovah Rafika. When they needed a provider, he was Jehovah Jireh. When they needed somebody to sanctify him, then he became Jehovah. Medicare, all of the things that they needed, they found it in the God of their salvation. But I thank the Lord in the last days, He revealed a name that is above every name, and that name is Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus. Jesus, Jehoshua, Jehovah has become our salvation. That's why we say when you say Jesus, we know you're calling on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There is no confusion there. You don't need to call on the Father. Just say Jesus, and you got the Father. You don't need to just call on the Son. Just call the name Jesus, and you got the, got the Son. Listen. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, but listen, we know that we serve uh, the one and true living God. Uh, amen. And he's everything that we need. Uh, that's why he manifested himself in the world. Uh, amen. And he purchased the church with his own blood uh, because there was not a man that was strong enough uh, that can bear the weight of sin. Uh, so God said, I'm going to take it upon myself uh, and make myself a body and come down uh, and purchase the church uh, with my own blood. It was only God uh, that can save us of our sins. Listen, the flesh was not God. But the spirit that was in that body was the Lord from glory. It took the blood of humanity to appease the judgment and the wrath of God to reverse the curse. That's why he came through the birth womb of a, of a woman, making him the son of man. But also being a son of God, being made like unto the first man, Adam. Amen. He was born of the Holy Ghost, having no biological earthly father, living his life as a human being. He went through the same trials as you and I. But he never broke the law. The Bible says, amen, that he who knew no sin was made sin for us. To which God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. I thank God for the revelation of who he is. 
Listen, that's why he was able to proclaim that I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He who was and is and is to come. Y'all quiet, but it's okay. The mighty God in Christ. Somebody shout Jesus. John said that I saw one throne. Everybody say one throne. And it was the throne of God and of the Lamb. He saw the 24 elders casting down their crowns of crowns of authority and dominion. They cast their crowns down to the one that sat on the throne because Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. This same Jesus, he came and he died on the cross for our sins. We must understand that Jesus' life was just as significant as his death, as it was an example unto us of how we should live. As we are seeing it through this passage of scripture today, and that is the humanity of Jesus Christ speaking. This, he, his, his life, he's testifying, amen, and his life testifies of how a child of God should conduct themselves, amen, as they live in this unjust and ungodly world. This one statement in this passage, it, it embodies his lifestyle and every choice that he made, the words for us that we ought to receive it and apply it to our life. He said, for I do always, everybody say always. I do always the things that pleases him, please the Father. There's no need for any deeper understanding. There's no need for any deep interpretation. You don't need to go to a Strong's Concordance, amen, to study this out, to understand what he's saying. He means exactly what he's saying. He said, I always do what pleases God. Not just some of the time. Not just when I'm around the saints. Not just when it's convenient. Not just when I'm around the crowds of people. Not just on Sundays and midweek Bible studies. Never once did he decide that I'm going to do my own thing. But he honored and sought God in every choice. Even in the time when he was in, in war within his flesh in the garden of Gethsemane where the Bible says that he was wrestling so hard that he began to sweat drops of blood. And then he said, Father, please let this cup pass from me. But in the same breath, he said, nevertheless. In the moment when he's, he's understanding what's getting ready to happen, he's getting ready to be beaten and smitten for all humanity, to bear all of our sins on the cross. And he said, Father, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. The scriptural evidence of Father, let this cup pass from me. Let us know that he had to wrestle with tough choices too. He's not just telling you to be holy as amen. He don't know what it's like to live in the world. He's not telling you to go right when he's saying go right, amen, and, and struggling with making that decision because you know, amen, what's going to happen if you make that choice. He's been there before. Let's just lift our hands. Let's worship God. <laughs> Nevertheless, means notwithstanding, in spite of, God, if you don't change your mind, if you don't provide a way of escape, if you never block the trial, nevertheless, if it pleases you, Not my will, but thy will be done. That ought to be our number one priority as a disciple. Jesus said in 5 and 30, I seek not my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. He always did the will of God. You're going to hear me say it a few different ways today. He took it up with the master every choice, even at the height of the war in his flesh. 
The only way that he was able to submit himself to the will of God, hear me, is that his flesh was subject to the deity. But the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 10 that it pleased the Lord to bruise the son, to bruise him. It, it might not have been pleasing to the flesh of Christ, but because it pleased the father, he said, nevertheless. He took the nails in his hands and his feet because it pleased God. He never said a word while going through the most painful torture of his life because he knew that it pleased God. While he was taking his last breath, gasping for air, suffocating in his own weight and, and blood. Listen, he cried out in all of his pain, feeling the weight of the sins of humanity. Matthew 27 and 46 says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. This is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Many of us have been there before where the pain becomes so bad that, that we cry out to God as though he has forgotten about us. God, have you left me for dead? God, I'm going through the trial of my life. God, and I don't know how long I can hold on. God, have you left me in this storm? It doesn't seem like it's ever going to end. But that wasn't Jesus' last words. If he would have left it at that, then it would have been about self, like some of us do. But his last words reflected his desire to please God. His last words were that of a man that wanted to please the Father even in the most excruciating pain that he ever endured in his life. Luke 23 and 34, he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He knew it pleased the Father to pray for those that persecute him. He knew it pleased the Father to intercede on behalf of those that are doing him wrong. <laughs> I'm taking my time right now. Those are the words of a man that desires to please God. When you pray for those that talk about you, it pleases God. When you intercede on behalf of those that throw your name in the mud, it pleases God. When you're swift to hear and slow to speak, it pleases God. Even though in your flesh you want to rise up and say something. But if you just hold your peace. It pleases God. Turn and tell somebody it's pleasing to the Lord. If it pleases my Savior for me to stand there with tears in my eyes, even though the world and those that, that should know be better is talking about me, it pleases him for me to stand there and not say nothing, not to open up my mouth to defend myself, but let the Lord fight my battles. It pleases God. I'm helping somebody right now. God's trying to talk to somebody. This ain't in my notes. Listen, uh, you got people that are running in, you're running your name in the mud, but listen, uh, you ought to hold your peace uh, and let the Lord fight your battles. If you open up your mouth, uh, you might say the wrong thing that'll put you on the wrong side with God, uh, but if you hold your peace, Lord will fight your battles and it'll please him. That should be our ultimate objective to please our Savior. Can I tell you this? Are you ready for this? Not wanting to go to hell should not be your ultimate objective. This really might rub somebody the wrong way. Your ultimate objective shouldn't be to go to heaven. I said it. Because there's people that want to go to heaven, but they don't love God. They just want to escape pain. 
That's just like people that, that they say, God, if you get me out of this, I'll never do this again. And God provides a way of escape. And they go back to iniquity. They wanted a way of escape, but they didn't want to serve God. The end goal should be to spend eternity with him. Our objective should be to please the one that sits on the throne that rules in heaven. Yes, we ought to keep those things as, as a part of our priority, but let me tell you something. You can't scare your way out of hell and scare your way into heaven. When you please, when you, when you make pleasing the Lord your number one priority, then you'll make heaven. And you'll miss hell. When your desire is to please God, you'll do whatever it takes to please him, and you'll make heaven your home. Pleasing God should be your ultimate objective. It's like, amen, when you really love somebody. I, I, I got somebody that I really love right here. She's the only one that can make me blush. But listen, when you really love somebody, <laughs> I love you, baby. <laughs> When you really love somebody, you want to do whatever you can to make them smile, even if it makes you look dumb in front of everybody else. You want to bring them joy and not sorrow. You don't want to dis disappoint them. You don't want to hurt them. You, you want to please them so bad that you're willing to look a fool, like a fool in front of everybody else. You're wanting to please them so bad that words can't describe it. So you try to produce actions that, that professes your love. That's why you find people in love doing all kind of crazy stuff. Because what they're trying to say is, I love you this much. That's how it should be for God. <laughs> love. When you have real love, it's no longer about you, but it's about the one that you love. Did not Paul say that love thinketh not on the things of itself? I'm talking about pleasing God. When you really have a desire to please God and you love him, then it becomes less about God, what can you do for me? And more about God, what can I do for you? That's real love. That's really trying to please him. Listen, before we seek to please anybody else, we need to please the Lord. We should live our lives that's not based upon what's pleasing everybody else. As a matter of fact, I have found out this, that when you live to please people, you'll never please God. But when you please God, you might lose some friends. You might lose some people. You might lose some folks that you thought you was going to rock with for the rest of your life. But that's why Jesus said, if less a man hate his mother, father, wife, auntie, uncle, cousins, bookie, and all of them, he said, you cannot be my disciple. That word hate, amen, it's a strong word. But what he's saying is, you ought to love them less than you love me. I'm trying to help somebody today. Listen, when you're trying to please people, the truth is, is that people don't even know what they want. That's why you find yourself in trouble with God. What do I mean? Listen, people look at persecution and they say, God, why? Why me? Why me? Why me? But they don't even recognize that that's the best thing for them. I remember when I was asking God, it's a dark time in my life, and, and it seemed like everything was falling apart. And I was like, God, why? Why me? Why my family? Why do I have to go through this? I didn't want to, I, I wasn't doing nothing else. I wasn't sinning. I wasn't out here smoking and drinking. I wasn't doing nothing crazy. I was trying to do the will of God, and I found myself on the wrong end of the stick. 
And God said, it's the best thing for you. Because it actually pushed me into what God was calling me to. Sometimes we, can, we interpret, amen, God allowing things to happen in our lives as, amen, as something that God is mad at us or God hates us or God is trying to kill us or God doesn't love us anymore. But listen, God never said that it would be easy. We sing this song, nobody told me that the road would be easy until something happens. And then we say, God, why me? But we forgot we was just singing the song without really getting the revelation of the words to the song. I'm almost done. T.F. Tenney said, if it pleases God, it doesn't matter who it displeases. But if it displeases God, it doesn't matter who it pleases. Trying to please people in this world will only leave you dried up and lost. But, but looking to please God will leave you fulfilled and blessed. Verse number 40 and 8, and I'm, I'm almost done. Verse 40 and 8, is a, it's a prophetic word, amen, that the psalmist who wrote gives us insight to the heart and the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I delight to do thy will, O God. Thy law is within my heart. The word delight, it means a desire to please. It's interesting to note, amen, as you read this scripture that pleasing God, amen, and having his word in our hearts are joined together. This is why it's important for you to get into the word of God because you can't please God without knowing his word. I want you to lift your hands right now. Why don't you say, God, help me to get in your word. Help me, God, to, to study your word, God. Help me not to just regurgitate. No wonder why the psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Which means, amen, that God's word, it can't be in your heart, amen, if you really don't have a desire to please him. I want you to stand to your feet right now. I'm going to tell somebody this. If it was in your heart to please God, and I'm not trying to beat up on nobody right now. I'm trying to help you. If it was in your heart to want to please God, you would live right. Why? Because holiness pleases God. That's why the writer said, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. If you really had a desire to please God, you wouldn't have a problem with leaving this world behind. If you, had a, if you really had a desire to please God, then you, your focus wouldn't be on what can God do for me. And it would be what can I do for God. If you really had a desire to please God, and this, listen, I really had to check my own spirit when God was talking to me. Because I found some areas of my life, listen to me now, I found some areas of my life that it was all about me and not about God. It's so easy to do. And we can disguise it and say this is all for Jesus, but it's really all for self. How we know it's all about self is when things don't go our way. That's truly the test. Of, are you in it to please God or are you in it to please yourself? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 1 says, Furthermore, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that ye have received of us how we ought to walk and to please God. So ye would abundant more and more. Holiness pleases God. Setting ourselves apart, it pleases God. Following after God, it pleases him. Holiness is not to please man, but holiness is to please the Lord. We are called to lift up holy hands. I need somebody to hear me today. 
because I'm giving you the answer to living a life that is blessed and favored of the Lord. When you desire to please God in your body, in your pal, in the things that you do, when your desire is to please him and you walk according to what the scripture says, you'll find yourself living in a blessed and abundant life. But the reason why some people can't get to the promises of God that he's called them to, he's spoken it over your life and he's not a liar. He meant what he said, but why you can't get to it is because there's some things in your life, some areas that you're not pleasing him in. You want the blessings, but you don't want to give up something. You want the favor. You want the money. You want the house. You want the better job. You want the bigger, you want the bigger career. You want the high pay increase. But God is saying, what about me? I am convinced that if God gave us exactly what we were praying for without our, our, our responsibility and our, of us upholding our responsibility to give him what's due to him, it would destroy us. You can't handle a million dollars. You want to know why you can't handle a million dollars? It's because you can't handle ten dollars. He said, honor the Lord with thy substance. If you can't honor him with the ten, what makes you think you're going to honor him with the million? If you can't honor him in the little hut that you live in, what would you think you're going to do when you get in the ten-bedroom house? Money is not what you need. A bigger house is not what you need. What you need is to humble yourself. <laughs> I know it's tight, but it's right. Am I in the right church? Listen. There are too many people that are praying, God, bless me, bless me. And God is saying, please me. Our example is Christ. He died for somebody else. He died for you. He died for me. Why? When we go before God, and we're getting ready to pray. We go before God and we're like, God, me, 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 me. But God is saying, what about me and what about everybody else that I've called you to? Can we lift our hands right now? I want you just to pray. I think it's fitting that, that as we search ourselves, I know it's not hype message, it's all right. But it's the best thing for our souls. It's my prayer right now that God would, he, would, he, would he cause us to examine ourselves. And if there's areas of our life that we know we're not pleasing God in, it could be in the area of your finances. Because you know God... The Bible says that we honor him with our substance. Did you not know that the tithe, amen, is not something that you're paying to God? It's his already. We return, not pay. Did you not know that the house that you live in, it's not yours? It might have your name on the deed, but at the end of the day, if God says, nah. -uh, no more. He can flatten the house just like that. The car that you drive that you work so hard to get, and you're like, man, this is my car. Your children be like, can I drive your car? No, this is my car. <laughs> I paid a note. That car ain't yours either. The pay that you get, it's not yours. It's God's. He's asking us to honor him. You know what my prayer is? My prayer is that God would restore a healthy dose of the fear of the Lord back in our hearts. 
fear of the Lord. It's not the same as the spirit of fear that, that causes us to tremble and, and run the opposite way of what God is calling us to. But the fear of the Lord, it means that we have a high regard and respect for God and the things of God. That we don't want to make God upset with us. We don't want to displease him. But we say what Jesus said. I always do what's pleasing to the Father. Even though it may be afflicting to my flesh. If it pleases him for me to stand here and endure affliction, so be it. If it pleases him to take everything away from me, so be it. Come on, I need you to pray right now. Come on, I need you to pray. Come on. Come on, the altar's open. I, 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 listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking somebody right now that, that you have been, maybe you're that person that you have been honoring God in areas of your life. You've been, you've been walking, amen, saying you're walking with him, but you know you're not walking according to what he's called you to walk in. And so you're not really pleasing him on the outside. It looks like you are, but on the inside you're not. I don't have the God vision to look through your life and say, that person's pleasing God, that person's pleasing God, and that person's pleasing God. But God knows everybody's heart in the room. He knows everything about you. He knows why you say the things that you say. He knows why you give the information that you give to people. He knows why you do the things that you do. He knows the matters and the motives of your hearts. That's why he's saying, you got to repent. Just listen, if we don't repent, maybe this message isn't for you, but it's for somebody in the room. If we don't repent, and we die in a state, listen to me right now, we die in a state where we know we were not pleasing God. We can have our best Sunday suit on. We can have the Armani shoes. The What's, it, what's those shoes called? You can have your Armani suit. You can have your nice shiny shoes. You can have the $150 tie, and you will leave this world, and everybody will give you a good funeral and say all the great things about you, but God knows. Come on, I need you to talk to him right now. <laughs> he knows the motives and the intentions of our hearts. He knows why you do the things that you do. Those things matter. He knows the wicked intentions of our hearts. That's why the psalmist said, search me, oh God. Did you not know that you don't even know what is down in the recesses of your own heart? Jeremiah, he said, he said, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. You deceive yourselves when you say you're right, when God is saying, no, you're not. The little voice when the preaching and the singing is going on about things that you've done, stuff that you said, that sometimes we ignore and we try to praise over it, but we're not pleasing God. Don't talk to him. Come on. Come on. I need every child of God, every believer. I need you to talk to him. Come on. And if God is speaking to you, come on. Right now is your time to repent. Come on. The Bible says, amen, that we have an advocate with the Father who is faithful and just to forgive. We serve a forgiving God. We serve a God that is able to wash us clean, wash our minds, wash our spirits. But we've got to be willing to be open and honest before the Lord and say, God, I haven't been pleasing you in this area. I haven't been pleasing you in that area, God. I, there's the little things it's the little foxes that destroy us it's not the big stuff but it's the little things that we refuse to repent of come on talk to him come on we need to turn this place into a prayer room come on hallelujah Jesus come on 
Come on, God, get rid of the little foxes out of my life, Lord, because I want to be pleasing in your sight. I want to really lift up holy hands, God. Lord, search me, God. God, reveal to me any wicked thing that's found within me, Lord, because I want to be clean, God. I want to be clean. Come on, ministers. Come on, we ought to humble ourselves. We ought to seek the face of God. We ought to say, Lord, if there's anything in my heart, Lord, I want to please you. Come on, we can't preach our way out of amen, out of what's coming if we aren't pleasing God. We can't, amen, go and reach the lost, amen, and think that we're okay with God when we know that there's areas in our lives that we're not pleasing him in. I know it's good and fine that you go and teach Bible studies and you're preaching and your God is using you in your gifts, but let me tell you something, amen, you can do all of those things, but at the end of the day, Hey, uh, I don't want to hear God tell anybody, say, uh, depart from me, you work of iniquity, uh, because I never knew you. Lord, I've done this, I've done that. But God said you didn't please me in this area. You refused to turn from your wicked ways behind closed doors. You refused to repent of the gall that came out of your mouth. You refused. Lord, search us. Search us, Lord. Come on. Come on, church. Come on, church. You want to see real revival. Real revival is not when the harvest is coming in, but real revival is when God's people humble themselves. They're willing to get down on their knees and seek the face of God and say, God, get the wickedness out of my heart. God, purify my motives. God, I repent of the God that came out of my mouth. God, I, rep I repent of the things that I said in the wilderness season that I knew was not right, but I said it out of frustration. Lord, I'm sorry. Come on, church. Come on, he's talking to somebody right now. Come on. Come on, you know the areas, amen, that God has been calling you to come up higher in, amen. You've been wearing the badge of rebellion around for far too long. You say, God has called me to this, but I just ain't done it yet. And you're telling people, but don't you know, praise God, that, amen, you're in rebellion when God is telling you to do something and you're refusing to do it, praise the Lord. That's called rebellion. And the Bible says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Lord, I repent. I repent of my rebellion, Lord. Lord, I repent. Come on, somebody. You need to go before God and get real with him. You need to go before God and say, God, I'm sorry for not doing what you told me to do. I want to please you. I want to please you. Come on. Come on, we're getting ready to pray, amen. I'm getting ready to have the ministers come and pray and lay hands. But listen, this needs to be a moment where God will search all of our hearts. God will search and allow God to purify us. Because, amen, I want God to say at the end when I take my last breath that I pleased him in every area of my life. Even in the areas that nobody knows about. Even in the areas, praise God, where I... I thought uh, that nobody's were watching, uh, but I still want to please God. Uh, so I'm going to repent of everything uh, that has happened behind closed doors. Come on, somebody. You ought to repent say, God, uh, I'm sorry for the things uh, that I spoke behind closed doors uh, that was not right or pleasing in your sight. Uh, God, I'm sorry, Lord, uh, for the stuff that came out of my mouth. Uh, God, I'm sorry uh, for the things that I did that nobody knows about. 
Because at the end of the day, God sees all and he knows all. Uh, amen. He's an all-seeing God. Uh, he's an all-knowing God. Uh, there's no place that you can go that God is not. Uh, David said, if I ascend into the hills, uh, God is there. He said, if I make my bed in hell, uh, God is there. There's no place that you can go. That God is not watching. We're not here to please people. We're not here to please each other. But we're here to please the Lord. Come on, lift your voice. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm telling you, if we would turn, then we'll see a change in our households. If we would turn, we'll see a change in our children. You're wondering uh, where your children are picking up stuff from. Uh, they might not be seeing you do it, uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, your spirit talks uh, before your, you ever open up your mouth. Uh, what you do when they're not watching uh, the spirit that you operate in. Uh, amen. It is a seed that is sown uh, into the life of your children. Uh, you want to know where it comes from. You ought to check yourself first. Come on. I want my life to be pleasing to God. I want my life to be pleasing to God. I want my life to reflect holiness and separation. I want my life to reflect the word of God. I want when people to see me, they don't see Barry Fields, but they see the Lord working through me. I want when people see me, they don't see any residue of the past, but I want when people see me that they see the work that the Lord has done in my life. I want when people see me that they see the Lord and they glorify Come on, that ought to be your prayer, that you please God so much uh, that it would impact lives around you, uh, that as you please God, uh, that people would see your lifestyle uh, and they'll testify and say, uh, I know there's something different about you uh, because you're not doing the same things that everybody else does. Uh, you don't have the same spirit as people uh, that are on the job, but there's something different that's working in your life uh, and it's because because your desire is to please God. Uh, they don't just see it in your dress, uh, but they feel it in your spirit. They feel uh, the Holy Ghost power oozing on the outside. They see you not just talking about holiness, uh, not just professing it on the outside, uh, but holiness in your conversation, uh, holiness in the conversation that you keep, uh, holiness in what you allow to pass through your ears, uh, holiness in what you allow to come out of your mouth, uh, holiness in what you allow to pass through your eyes. I want my life to be pleasing to the Lord. Come on, just talk to him. Come on, let the Lord clean you out. I'm telling you, he's going to do a washing. He's going to purify your motives. He's going to purify your spirit. He's going to create in you a clean heart and renewing you a right spirit as you offer, amen, that thing up to God. And you say, God, I'm sorry, Lord. God, take it out of me, God. Lord, purify my mind. God, purify my heart because I want to please you in every area of my life. Lord, I want to please you. If there's someone that, that maybe you haven't made your call in an election, sure. 
You want to please God, I'm telling you. Amen. Pleasing God is repenting of your sins. Pleasing God is going down in the watery baptism in Jesus' name. Pleasing God is receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost and walking in the newness of life. I'm telling you right now, if you want to please God, you ought to repent. You ought to turn from any wicked way that may be, amen, working and operating in your life. If you got a drug problem, I'm telling you, you, God has got a solution for your drug problem. If you got a problem with lying, God has a, has a solution for your lying problem. If you got a problem with fornication or perversion behind closed doors, God has got a solution and he's got enough blood to wash away every last one of your sins. We serve a God that is able to purify you and bring you out on the other side as pure gold. But you've got to be willing Willing to, to recognize where you're at in your life right now uh, and you gotta say I gotta get myself together it's all right the Lord knows that's why he's brought you here Can I have everybody just stand to your feet? As we're going to pray for a few more moments, but if I can have everybody stand to your feet one more time. And as you stand to your feet, I want you to say, God, search me. Come on, I want you to say, God, search me. Search my heart. Lord, I want to please you in my life. Lord, I want to walk up right before you. Lord, I want to please you, God, when nobody's watching. I want to please you behind closed doors. Lord, I want to please you in every area of my life. Lord, I want to make my calling and election really sure. Lord, I want to walk up right before you. Hallelujah. Have I own way, Lord? Have I own way? Hold o'er my being absolute sway, power. Oh, power, surely is thine, Christ only always, Savior divine, have thine own way. Have thine own way. Hold o'er my being. Absolute sway. Power, oh power. Surely is thine. Christ only always, Savior divine. How search me and try me. Master today, whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, 
as in thy presence humbly I bow have thine own way Lord have all thine own way wounded and weary help me I pray power of power surely is thine touch me and heal me Savior divine last verse have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit. Till all shall see Christ only always living in me. Last verse again. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hold o'er my being, absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit, till all shall see. Christ only always living. In me. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise. Aren't you worthy? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. Lord, I thank you for your blessings. Hallelujah. Pray God. Hallelujah. Giving you all the glory. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, He is the mighty King, Master. Wonderful is Jesus, my Lord. He's a great shepherd, rock of all ages. Almighty God is He. Bow down before Him, love. Wonderful, wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, wonderful Jesus, Savior. Jesus, my Hallelujah. Lord. 
He's the great shepherd. He's the great shepherd. Rock, Rock all of all ages. Almighty God is he. Bow down before oh, him. Love and, and adore him. His, His name, name is, is wonderful. Oh. And it's Jesus, my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I hear joy bells. Ringing in my soul, I hear Feel joy, joy bells, bells ringing, ringing in my soul. soul. Oh, joy, joy bells, joy bells, joy bells are ringing in my soul. Well, oh, I hear joy bells, bells keep ringing in my soul. In my soul, I hear joy bells keep ringing in my soul. I hear joy bells, joy bells, joy bells keep ringing in my soul. How many got joy bells? I got joy bells ringing in my soul. I got joy, joy bells, bells keep ringing in my soul. Well, joy, joy bells, well, it's joy bells, joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Well, I got joy bells ringing in my soul. Oh, I got joy bells keep ringing ringing my soul. Well, I, I got, got joy. Joy bells, oh joy bells, joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Well, I got joy bells ringing in my soul. Oh, I got joy bells ringing in my soul. Well, I got joy bells. I've got joy bells. Joy bells. Keep ringing in my soul. Oh, Holy Ghost, keep ringing in my soul. I got the Holy Ghost, keep ringing in my soul. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost, keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells, keep ringing in my soul. Oh, joy bells keep joy ringing bells. in my soul. I got the joy bells. I got joy bells. I got joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Come on, y'all. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. I got joy bells. I got joy bells keep ringing in my soul. I got joy bells, joy bells, joy bells keep ringing in my soul. I got joy bells keep, I got joy bells keep ringing. Oh, I got joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep ringing. I got joy, joy bells, joy, joy bells, joy bells. Holy Ghost joy Holy bells, Holy Ghost joy bells in my soul. I got joy bells, keep ringing. Holy Ghost joy bells in my soul. I got joy bells, joy bells. I got joy bells, joy bells. I got joy bells, joy bells, joy bells in my soul. I got the joy bells ringing in my soul. I got the Holy Ghost. Keep ringing in my soul. I got joy bells. I got joy bells. I got joy bells ringing in my soul. Holy Ghost joy bells. Keep ringing. Holy Ghost joy bells. Holy Ghost joy bells in my soul. 
I got joy. Well, I got joy bells. I got joy. Holy Ghost, joy bells in my soul. It got Holy Ghost, joy bells in my soul. I got the Holy Ghost, joy bells, joy bells in my soul. I got joy bells. Oh, joy bells. Holy Ghost, joy bells in my soul. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah, God, we thank you right now for the blessings of grace. Hallelujah, we ought to give God a praise right now. If you got the joy of the Holy Ghost in your soul, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, hallelujah. Somebody say, hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise for the Holy Ghost. Brings joy to your spirit. Bible calls it unspeakable joy. Somebody say it's full of glory. Hallelujah. We're thankful today for having been joined to this work. The work of the Spirit being done in this heart. Hearts being touched. Souls being delivered. Are there any, are there any announcements? Minister Hurst. Praise the Lord, everyone. These are your announcements. Many of you have probably already seen or heard about the um, mission, Move the Mission Pledge. It's this card right here. They're out there in the uh, vestibule on that table. If you have not received or gotten one, please do. Today is the last day that you can fill this out and turn this in. This is a pledge commitment.